Hey there, thanks for stopping by. I'm Blue Bear, and this is going to be another Incarnate video. Today's video is going to be completely different from anything that I've done before. It's going to be more of a pod podcast style video. I've got Animo coming on, just talking about the current state of the alpha, uh, what we've liked, what we've disliked, and what we're excited for going forward. If you like these, definitely let me know because I had a lot of fun doing this one, and I'm actually excited to do more of them. So check it out, and uh, hope you enjoy the video. All right, I'm here with Animo, and he's been one of the playtesters during the alpha. He's been very helpful and very insightful in the Discord, and just wanted to get his thoughts on the game so far and uh, have a quick chat with him. So, uh, Animo, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. And uh, hello, everyone. Yeah. Um, Great to hear from you. And uh, I just, yeah, just want to give uh, give you an opportunity to introduce yourself real quick. You know, how long have you been gaming? Uh, what kind of uh, games do you play, and what are your favorites? Yeah, so uh, obviously I'm Animal. I've been gaming for about 30-ish years. I was introduced by my my father way back when I was a toddler. We used to watch him play on his Commodore Amiga, like old games like Jaguar, for example. Nice. Um, my, probably my favorite game, I think, has to be Final Fantasy. Just, oh. you know, so many hours growing up have been put into that series and genre. Nice. I never played Final Fantasy. I got into gaming pretty late in my life, uh, right around college and stuff like that. So that was a little before uh, I started gaming. But uh, you know, it looks it looks like a pretty cool game. I'll have to probably check that out at some point and get back into that. It's a uh, it's one that you need a bit of time to set aside for, <laughs> for sure. But yep. it is amazing. Yep. Cool. So uh, tell me how you got involved in the uh, the Incarnate Alpha. So I'm I'm a, I'm actually a raid Shadow Legends player, and I watched some of the streamers. And then I saw, I've been kind of looking for another game for a while, and I saw Hell Hades had an alpha key available through his channel. Watched him do some like games on the stream and was instantly hooked. So I, I had enough points to buy that key. Got there through that, and then later through the Kickstarter as well. You know, I want to get fully involved in this game. It looks really fun. Nice, nice. Yeah, so I, I was doing the same thing, and that's how I got involved as well. Um, I didn't have enough stream points uh, to go or channel points to go get, uh, the alpha. So I did the Kickstarter. Uh, but yeah, it's been fun being part of his community and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that they're starting with him and, and hopefully we can get a lot of the folks, uh, in his community coming over to alpha or just incarnate in general, uh, cause it'd be a great starting point. Uh, Indeed, yeah. so what about the game though? Really like pulled you in? So I, like, I've been playing a few games, just to say raid. I've been playing some other stuff like, um, team fight tactics from league of legends. Uh, I, but w watching the streams and seeing um, Shamurai, I saw the Judge Incarnate background. Mm. So if you see the background for Diplomatic Immunity, which is, um, we may be able to pull it up if you have the yeah, yeah, let's, panel. Uh, let's see, I've got a couple of judges here. Yeah. Um, and just the look of them, you know, with their books, their wings shining. Uh, and then I watched the battle map and the hexes on that, and it was like, this is kind of a, a combination of what I like playing yeah. with the tactics, because some of the other games you see don't have the option to customize your own individual characters. Yeah, I, I did the same thing. So I saw the judge and I loved it as well. It's probably my, um, I'm kind of a jack of all trades uh, player. So when I was playing World of Warcraft, I really liked the paladin and the shamans because they could do it all. Uh, Judge kind of feels that way uh, when you look at it and, and the abilities. Uh, what I'll do is I'll hop into uh, some waves as we're talking around and just uh, highlight some of the um, some of the incarnates I've got going. Um, so yeah, that that also brought me into the game. Um, just just the ability to customize, just like you said, uh, that's what I really like about this uh, game as well. So, uh, what other games have you played um, that that kind of feel like this game? Anything? Um, so I guess from in terms of the actual board, it's probably some of like um, Team Fight Tactics or the Dota Two, man, the chess games. Um, I always felt kind of frustrated with those. You, it's very random. Uh, a similar game in terms of character creation is actually come back from the old Mech Warrior series. Mm -hmm. You customize your own robot, you build it up from scratch, and I used to play that on some of the Xbox consoles, and. 
you you you'd start and you gain pieces, which feels very similar to this, where you know I'm going to start with some common, maybe some rare pieces. I'm going to work my way up to those really nice legendary pieces as we play through the game. And uh, as I say, I just looked at some of those pieces. I want to want to see that you saw yourself the judge. Um, maybe we can insert a picture of it during the editing or something of the the legendary all judge. It's yeah. crystal clear white. And I've done, I built one during the original alpha with white and then like blue trim. Oh, and nice. Like, yep. This yep. is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I've got, uh, I think I've got, I've got it right here. This is the uh, legendary Judd right here. Uh, yeah. So it's got the all white with the gold trim. It looks uh, pretty awesome. Um, you know, I want to kind of talk about just, uh, you know, the development team and stuff like that, because you've been pretty active in the discord and, um, it seemed, you know, skeleton hand and sham have been, uh, you know, really active. So what's been your experience working with the development team thus far? So I really can't say enough about the development team. I've yeah. spoken to Shamurai and Jason on multiple different occasions. Um, I've been in some alphas where you just, you, you feel like you're almost irrelevant. I'm a number on the spreadsheet. I put my name on there and they don't talk back to you. Yep. And you, you yourself have seen this Discord. I, I've had a conversation even just today before we're talking where Shama said, what do you think of these? We've had a conversation backwards and forwards and they were already planning potentially to make some changes based upon that. I've been in voice conversations like this with Shamurai and gone, this looks really fun, but I think it's overpowered where I've had three quarters of the map covered in zombies. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, sometimes feedback in games other games you might not hear for 48 50 72 hours whatever it might be i don't think i've had a situation here where i've not had at least some feedback or an acknowledgement within kind of 24 12 hours or something yeah. so i'm really impressed by the team yeah i i, I love the inst almost it's almost instant feedback right and and the fact that they reach out just like you were saying this morning about you know what you know what parts are you guys just not using you know what feels right what feels bad um and then they made changes within, you know, 15, 30 minutes of just updating uh, the skills yeah. just so they felt right. Oh, man, that's incredible, right? And I'm looking forward to see what the actual changes were, but, you know, I've never had that experience. So I yeah. can't say, I really can't say enough for this, this team. Yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. Um, just It's not like I'm really working with them developing the game, but I feel like I'm working with them because they're involving us so much. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. We have, we've managed to get a really nice alpha team community and I'm hoping as we get more people in, maybe through your channel, through other sources, etc., we can help grow that community and keep the game at that kind of level. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm excited to see all the, you know, the tools and the community grow. Um, there's so many things about this game that you're going to need some, some resources and tools to help you probably play the game uh, with all the different interactions and stuff like that. So excited to be part of that growing community, just like you said. Uh, so, yeah. so during the alpha though, what's been your kind of primary focus during the alpha? Um, so I, if, if you ever heard the old terms of like Timmy and Spike and such for magic out of interest, fire a question back at you. Uh, no, I haven't heard those terms. Okay. So basically as a player, I'd like to be, I like looking at the power game side, but also can I do something crazy mad with the Timmy aspect? And I went in, seeing the judge artwork as you have, really wanted to test the judge out, looked at the Titan, and I actually, to begin with, was kind of disappointed with the way the Titan was playing. But as of the, over the course of the alpha, um, I found that it's more enjoyable. But um, I, I guess I've, my views have really changed, because uh, now I find I don't, I've never played zombies, I've never been someone who's looking at mass shambling hordes of monsters <laughs> in other games or even a summoner of any kind i'd much rather be that supporty healer you know defender type character which is why i was interested in the judge at the time i found myself <laughs> being a mono void walker player <laughs> where loads of shambling zombies across the board and like having so much fun with that so totally it was totally unexpected for me yeah, um, I was underwhelmed by the Titans as well. Then I started playing with the, the Eternals and stuff like that when they actually came out. And uh, the Eternals make a huge difference. And now two of my primary uh, incarnates are actually Titan-based. Um, and I haven't had uh, too much opportunity, um, primarily because I've, I haven't focused on it, but uh, doing the, the Void Watchers like you've been doing. So 
I'm excited to hear about, you know, what your thoughts are on the, the zombies and uh, what, what could they do better or, or are they too overpowered right now? I mean, what do you, what do you think about that? The, during the course of the alpha, the power level of the zombies, I think has been slowly being tuned back. Originally, as I say, there was a time where you'd have three zombie people at the back and you would just click end turn, end turn, end turn, and end turn mm. and not interact with, with your opponent in any way because the zombies were too strong. Right. They've added some mechanics now where the zombies have like a half-life effect. They slowly tick down and eventually they die. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually, with the Eternals, I've really liked the fact that you can tune whether you have ranged ones or tank ones or stuff like that. I think they're in a much better place now than they were. Yeah, I agree. Uh, no, knowing whether or not they're going to... Because obviously we're not playing PvP right now. Right, right. I don't know how they're going to balance in the PvP, and that's something we'll test going forward, hopefully. But I really like the place they're in now, and the Void Workers themselves don't feel like just, you know, in some games you have, are oh, you summon and you stand at the back, and you just let your waves go in front of you? They don't feel like that. They feel like you want to be in the middle of everyone. Again, I guess is why I got hooked by them. <laughs> going back to your question, some of the Egyptian links and the pyramids for the Void Walkers really hooked me in as well. You know, seeing yep. how that's it's just not something you see in some games. Yeah, I really like the look of the the Void Watcher and stuff, and and coming out of the void out here in this desolate area, you know, black clouds, got a few of them built up. I really like the way that um, they they're shading things uh, differently. Um, I think that's going to be one of the challenges in the game is um, understanding which incarnate is which based on just looking at it um, from a shading perspective because there's so many possibilities there. So. Yeah. Um, so what is, uh, so has, uh, has the Void Watcher build been your favorite thus far? Um, or has another build kind of caught your interest, but you just kind of focused on the Void Watcher because that's what was uh, given to you when, uh, you got drops for parts? A, a little bit. Like, obviously it's random as you know with the parts. I, I guess in this, this, in the first one, it was definitely a case of when, before we had the parts reset the first time, I had a lot of Void Walker parts and I was the first person to get prophecy which yep. is the legendary mega piece for void walk <laughs> walkers um and it was just like oh i want to do this i want to have a zombie apocalypse and go forward yep i think i've got one of those let's see if i can pull it up real quick uh yeah right here prophecy so it's got that create a zombie at the edge of your presence in each cardinal direction yeah pretty yeah awesome oh they changed the got... screen too <laughs> oh nice that's awesome yeah that forge screen was much different before um so that's that's basically that's the echoes piece they're coming out of the void right i mean you know yeah that's awesome i'm gonna have to summon i'm gonna have to forge one of these things uh and see if they have <laughs> any different animations or something all right uh sorry go ahead <laughs> back to no uh, no it's good it's nice yeah. to see it isn't it like yeah, this yeah, is it a is. game improvement yeah. as we as we go through we see the artwork yep i actually have been testing the titans you know after i gone through with this new one, and to you to you saying with the Eternals and the Archons as well. Yep. Um, for me, the Archons felt like you can only have Void Walker or an Archon because of all the rifts and the zombies and the, the way that it just doesn't synergize. Yep. But I've been finding just trying some of the summon rifts and blowing people up, and they do a lot more damage than I'm the ones I've been using. So that's been <laughs> good fun. Like I've been grinding 15 minute waves or something in these. Some of the characters, the Nazari especially, you can do the same amount of waves in a third of the time. So, it's yeah, definitely... that's that's huge because <laughs> yeah, some of these waves have been um, pretty long. But I think that's just because we're in the playtest mode where we're doing the waves and stuff. And those the wave mode isn't going to be there. So um, I'm hoping that the the time commitment per per level goes down a little bit. I've also heard something that I feel is going to be big. Where if you manage to do three star i don't know every area of the game obviously we both don't but mm -hmm. if you do some of them in three star manual you'll have the ability to auto them and right. or even like quick play them so something that i don't know um from like raid where you would do the campaign you have to mm -hmm. manually click it 300 times or use the auto clicker <laughs> yep this this i gather is going to be like you can run it 20 times and you get the reward instantly yeah, so I don't know if you play, um, I just got started getting into uh, Dragon Champions. It's got that auto battle mode, so if you get three stars, you can just go ahead and instant loot. So uh, that I think that's the way it's going to run, which is kind of pretty nice. 
Yeah, I've heard of it. I've not. Yeah, it's, it's... got so many games on our hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's similar to Raid. Uh, I think it's just a more friendly, friendlier version from a free, uh, free-to-play perspective and um, does a lot more of the similar mechanics in a different but, I think, better way. That's so, cool. Yeah, my wife and I started getting into it. She wanted a different play- game to play, too, so we started playing that. So uh, back back to the alpha, though. I mean, what are you excited? Like, what's what's coming down the road that you th- uh, think is going to be huge? And what are you super excited for uh, for the next builds coming up? I mean, I'm a as I say, I've gone back. I'm a maths player. I like to test myself against things, and this is the strongholds and the bosses definitely. But like, the fact that I'm going to be able to build my own map, where you as a player have to come and fight me on my own terrain with my own builds, my own incarnates. I don't know fully what I'm going to be able to customize, but and then I can go and watch a replay, see what that's happening, and, and you know, theory craft more. We can have a discussion in our clan. Is this working out better for you, and so forth? That's what I really want to try. Um, and then the bosses. We've seen some of the the artwork for the bosses where I'm going to have to cross these massive rivers of boiling oil or whatever that might be. And I'm wondering to myself is well, does right. Um, Rise of the Pyramids, I can't remember what it's called exactly. The Eternal from Voidwalk and, you know, maybe yep. in the Voidwalk. Raise the, it raises up the land as a pyramid if I have six zombies. Does that mean I can make a bridge across these gaps? Or there's so many options with this terrain. Maybe I can make a wall using the arc on wall function and, yeah, you know. Yeah, I was wondering that as well on those like ravines of acid and stuff like that, where if you raise the space, does the acid come with you or does it stay at the bottom and you can uh, kind of jump over it? Or do you have to use some sort of kind of teleport ability to get over on those other sides? Um, but I'll, I'll echo the the stronghold. I'm really excited about that. Uh, that customization of your own map um, to defend is going to be huge. And I think I think the ability to share and watch your replays is huge um not only just from learning experience and and how to better your your defense and and understand what's working and what's not but being able to share with the community to show them what what kind of is working and what isn't working especially in a game where i think it's kind of complex the pretty complex game um it's going to have kind of a high learning curve and and steep threshold to get in and and be competitive or uh, successful in the game so Anything you can do to um, improve engagement and share knowledge uh, throughout this community in this type of game, I think, is going to be huge. Yeah, for sure. Right. Just, you know, it's a whole aspect that we don't see in other games. Yep. When I put PvP, I put my team in an arena and let, I'd never see what happens. <laughs> I don't even find out, you know, or I, get, I could have to manually go and look do I win or lose? Yeah. Some yeah. of my points drops. But this time I can be like, you know, invested in my defense. I can build the map up. Right. That's just like a unique aspect to this game that I've not seen anywhere. Yeah, no, it's it's really cool. I mean, the only the only game I played uh, that had your own kind of build feature was um, Terra, and it and it wasn't even that you had people come attack you or anything like that. You just got to build your home and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed the building piece of it. Um, mm. So I'm I'm excited to build and and create your own maps and stuff like that. And just in just understanding how. Um, you know the difference between the stronghold and actually playing in the campaign, or the, or in in this case the waves mode, uh, just feels so much different. Where you're actually going to be able to um, summon either different statues or different objects on the on the map based on your incarnate uh, class. It just it feels really interesting and unique, and I'm I'm pretty excited for that. So so moving away from things that you might be excited for though, um, is there any part of the game that you think? is going to prevent it from being successful um whether it be you know the community which i don't think i think we can agree that the community is starting off really well so and the developers are really great but but things you might think that might um, prevent this game from being successful um for one it's it's potentially very complex um just put when you you look down or i have what 25 parts three or it's more than that but so many different combinations for me, mainly, it's going to be the AI. One of the biggest takeaways I'm sure you find is how much time do I have, especially now that most of us in the world are leaving COVID lockdown. We're going mm-hmm. back out into the real world. I don't have as much time as I've had for the, the last year. So can I get to the point where I'm 
confident on this AI system on a 3D map with the map changing effects that I'm happy to run my 10 farming runs or whatever it might be. Um, and is also the AI going to be challenging enough and the opponents when I want to play it in a manual mode that I don't feel like sometimes we found in these waves that it's very can get very repetitive. Right. I know if I build as I was saying at one point I had three zombies with prophecy that would sit on the back line and I would just hit end turn repeatedly. That's not what we want and I've gone back to the development and they said no that's not what we want either and they fixed it so now I can't do that in the game. Um, I'm just hoping that the AI makes it to a point where the game is both enjoyable but not inf infinitively time consuming. I'm not going to have time to do five hours a day of playing just this game to be able to be competitive. But if I can put in 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you know, maybe on my lunch break or something, and have everything I need to do, and, but still have the option if I want to, to come back and fiddle with my stronghold or something, that's going to be the big thing for me. I think that's more and more um, common nowadays. Like a lot of people uh, used to play, you know, and, and still do, right? Like the World of Warcrafts that, you know, you're sitting there all day, every day. And, and even if you played for 12 hours in a row, you still weren't done with the game and you, you still had more things to do and you felt you needed to go do that. And it just became a second job, right? Yeah. Um, so especially with this type of game being um, a mobile game, I mean, it's got to be one of those things where you can just pick up, play for, you know, 15, 20 minutes while you're waiting to go do something else and then just drop it, right? And I think that's what they're trying to aim for. So I'm I'm, I'm going to agree with you there that hopefully that, they have um, they've balanced it enough where uh, you're not sitting there grinding for you know six hours a day just to be successful and that's what I think you know um, having played raid and stuff like that that's where I think it's becoming um, or, or going it's just it feels like you're spending way too much time in the game especially for a mobile game just to be uh, competitive and successful or feel like you're competitive and successful anyways um, yeah and for me I think um, I think the complexity of the game uh, is going to be challenging I mean. You, you hit the nail on the head where you've got, you know, 8,000 different unique combinations and incarnates that you can make. So trying to learn those incarnates and the interactions between all of them, um, it's going to be a really, you know, tough task. Um, then throw in, you know, the customization of the Eternals on top of that and yeah. the interactions between the Eternals and the moves. And, and, and we probably saw some of, it, some of it in the gameplay here where, um, you know, the Eternals were forcing people or forcing incarnates to actually drop down spaces uh, when they got pulled into a presence, and that's not there on each incarnate's uh, part. It's it's only there when you actually equip that um, that eternal. And yeah. just understanding the interactions and stuff like that, and the synergy is going to be one of the I think the biggest challenges. And it's going to take some commitment to do that. And that's something that I think might uh, prevent people from sticking with the game. Um, but hopefully, you know, <laughs> folks like you can come on and help us all understand the uh, the interactions and the best synergies and stuff like that. And, and we can put uh, some good guides out there for people to make it a little bit easier for them to get into the game. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, I also feel like from the development standpoint, when you've spoken to the developers, they want all the abilities to feel usable. Yeah. So a newer player come in and they have some of these commons, they don't have the big legend trees, but they can probably still compete at a fairly viable level. Obviously, you know, some of the legendaries have mass effects like Prophecy or Apocalypse or yep. but I would have said one of the strongest pieces in the game at the moment is a judge common. Yeah. Yep. So um, um, subpoena, right? I mean Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And actually I really like the boar, um, the common yeah, right here, boar, lower the space in front of you, attack by two then attack um when you actually pair it with the eternals um it it becomes a pretty strong uh, ability and it's just a it's a common part and you're gonna be able to build you know multiple incarnates with that so uh that's a really good point i do like the fact that they are trying to make sure that every part is playable and it has a place in the game uh that way you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours grinding just to get the you know top end piece unless you want to be really competitive right yeah is that yeah i mean totally and I think that's the joy of the game. You can customize your own characters. You can customize your own feel of your characters. Like I can see you here in your gameplay. You've got multiple titans. Yeah, we've got two wow. two titans playing right now. Um, well, two kind of titan based um, playing right now. And and I've I've loved these. <laughs> um, and just with the Eternals and stuff like that. Once you pair them up, they they become pretty strong. But 
uh, yeah. All right. So, um, anything else you want to close with? I mean, any, uh, anything about, uh, you know, the, what you want out of the, from the community or what you want from this game going forward and stuff like that, that you want to share with everybody? Um, I mean, the community is, as you say, is blossoming nicely. Hopefully we can get it to grow more. I know that there is a big beta, beta coming on, which we'll, we get them in and we're going to have maybe an alpha clan type for the actual game. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of the game, I, I just want it to carry on as is. You know, if we keep seeing these new features coming to the game, I get to go back to Sham and Jason and some of the other developers and they'll be as open as they are. They're obviously going to get busier. You know, there'll be more of us yeah, to talk to. Yeah. I don't expect that we're going to get the exact same quality, but I know that they're, the, from what I know of those people, they're, they are going to be all in for it. So I, I can't, can't really complain for that. I'm looking to... Have a, I want to test my PvP stronghold against everyone when they come. <laughs> Bring it, you know? Yep. You're going to have to face the zombie hordes if I can get the pieces and take it from there, really. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, for the beta, I think we get to carry over build. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they've decided uh, definitively if they're going to do that. So make sure you get a build going that you really like, uh, just in case we are able to <laughs> uh, carry it over. I've got uh, three very nice Void Walkers, all 60, that I've been churning. I'm on wave 200 or something, so yep. forward to see how they do. Probably get wrecked by something that I'm not prepared <laughs> for, but that's the, sh- that's the fun of it, I'm right? I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, well, Animo, it was great speaking with you. Um, I hope we can do this again. You know, this, is, this was fun. I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll be chatting more like this in the future, especially when new features drop. Um, you know... Uh, just thank you thank you for your time no problem it's a pleasure to be here and there you have it i loved having that conversation with animo uh he brought a lot of good insight into what he's already done in the game and what he's looking forward to going forward Uh, i hope to have him back sometime um you know the self-proclaimed uh void watcher king uh himself uh hopefully we can get him back uh and hopefully you get to see him in the game in his stronghold and test it out Uh, when that becomes available. Uh, If you like this video, feel free to uh, like and subscribe. Toss a comment down below. Did you like this style? Do you want more of it? Is there anybody else you think I should ask to join uh, just to get their feedback, whether it's a developer or another alpha tester? Uh, Let me know. Uh, Again, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.